the National Public Radio, or NPR, as the cool kids in sweater vests call it, has been seen as the top of the game when it comes to political news and journalism. But over the years, they've become more and more of a propagandist radio station for mainstream establishment politics that spins conspiracy theories and smears as real news. Let's take a look at at a a very recent interview that Robin Young from Here and Now did with Tulsi Gabbard. And even from the start, you can really feel the oily sounds of bias greasing the microphone as she records this, this interview. Yesterday, Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard qualified to be the 12th Democratic presidential candidate on the debate stage in October, and we spoke with her yesterday as part of our conversations with candidates. Today, we're sharing that with this preface. You'll hear Congresswoman Gabbard object to our question about her being raised in the science of identity, which on its website says it teaches the science of self-discovery through Vishnava Hindu yoga. But many, including Gabbard's own aunt, believe the group is a cult led by former Hare Krishna follower Chris Butler, who they say preaches a homophobic anti-science message. Gabbard's father, a follower, founded the nonprofit Stop Promoting Homosexuality America. She backed him as he led a fight against gay marriage. She later disavowed that, saying she believed things in her past were wrong and hurtful. So we thought it a natural question to ask about that past. Tulsi Gabbard is also a rising star in her party and a rap war veteran, a former Democratic Party vice chair, who stands her own ground, endorsing Bernie Sanders in 2016, later meeting with Sirius Assad and calling for an end to wars. Here's our conversation. Okay, this is a weird introduction for someone that you are going to have an unbiased interview with. Right, she basically highlights that, that Tulsi Gabbard was in a cult, but makes it sound like she was there till about last year. Like Tulsi hasn't been a part of these sort of ideologies in a very long time. And Robin Young makes it sound like she was one of those like Westboro Baptist homophobic protesters, but instead of screaming, you'll all burn in hell, she's screaming, do some yoga for to march straight in this year's parade. I mean, it's also a a pretty insulting way to frame yoga and Hinduism, right? This this puts the idea that cultists as the forefront of Hinduism. If that's the case, then don't we want to call out Joel Olstein for running a cult which is clearly funding his addiction to teeth whitening? I mean, punishing someone for the sins of their fathers doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Robin was part of a religious family when she grew up, possibly Catholic or another Jesus based religion. Would it be fair to introduce her as someone who was part of a child molestation cabal because they went to church on Sundays? I mean, the simple answer is no, but for propaganda purposes, let's paint the picture as Pizzagate the sequel and with a new female lead. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, welcome. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. And and let's start there. What is it that you're saying that's resonating with voters? Uh, first of all, I, I, it's it's no surprise that we've uh, gotten this news uh, because we've been consistently polling in the top 10 in just about every early state poll. And what I have been focused on, what I'm going to continue to focus on, debate or no debate, is on meeting directly with voters, listening to them, uh, sharing with them my message about bringing the principles of service above self to the White House, ending these wasteful counterproductive regime change wars and redirecting our taxpayer dollars, our precious resources towards serving the very real and urgent needs of the American people. Things like health care, uh, education, infrastructure, protecting our environment. When- the reality is that the more exposure to the public Gabbard gets, the more popular she becomes. She was the most Google candidate after the first two debates, and even after she didn't make the third debate, she was able to get back on the fourth one. And at every turn, the DNC has been trying their damnedest to change the rules to ensure that either her voice isn't heard or that she's smeared. And you say healthcare. Are you for Medicare for all? If you could just tick through the list more specifically. 
uh, yes, I support, I prefer to call it Medicare choice, where we are ensuring quality health care for all people, regardless of, of how little they may have in their pocket or they, their bank account, while man- maintaining their freedom of choice. If they've got a, a, an employer-sponsored plan or a union-sponsored plan that they're happy with, they should have the opportunity to do so. But the bottom line being that in the wealthiest nation in the world, there is no excuse that we still have far too many Americans who are underinsured or uninsured and who are one healthcare emergency away from total financial disaster. Okay, I know a lot of progressives have jumped off the Tulsi train and some of them uh, are tucking and rolling and some of them break their legs and worry about how they're going to pay for the hospital bill, right? You you probably shouldn't, like, jump off of a a running train. Uh, But to me, this plan is to help conservatives see the value of Medicare for all. Look, at this point, we're not trying to convince the progressives or even some of the liberals that Medicare for all is the way to go, because it is. But it's the Fox News viewer that believes that it's socialism and the trade-off for Medicare for all is that a Mexican immigrant will sneak into their house and steal their kidneys for free, leaving them in a bathtub full of ice. And that ice, the ice has to be paid by the American taxpayer. They're the one foot in the bill. This Medicare choice plan uses the marketplace against itself to prove to the public that this option of universal health care is the best way to go. It's better than health insurance provided by a union or provided by a private uh, health care industry, right? And I understand that it's not a perfect system, but neither is Medicare for all. Both ideas will take some tweaks. The, the, they'll need some adjustments that need to be made. And Tulsi also talks about holding the pharmaceutical companies accountable for increasing the cost of health care by price gouging. And we should be concerned about big pharma. They're, they're like a drug addict, but only for money, right? They'll, they'll hold you hostage or, or, or try to suck your dick in, in a gas station parking lot just for a little look-see at, at a Benjamin, right? Just, just let, me, let, me look at, let me look at the top of the head, just a, a little bit of the hair, maybe the bifocals. Just show me the bifocals. Of, I just want to see the bifocals to know that it's there. That's, that's what the fucking big pharma is doing. We'll talk about the, the thing that is seems to be number one on your list, which is uh, national security and not intervening in other countries' squabbles. Some people feel that that has sort of blinded you to the leaders who need addressing. We're reminded this week about your comments about Assad. NPR reported on those documents that were smuggled out of Syria that show evidence of torture on the part of his regime, a violation of international law. You know you have been called, and it's not very pleasant, but a toady. Okay, that word was used towards Tulsi Gabbard by Barry Weiss on the Joe Rogan podcast late last year. And then... Weiss struggled to define what that word was. A comedian and podcaster had to school a New York Times journalist about what she was actually saying. Barry Weiss is pretending to be a journalist, while Joe Rogan accidentally proved that he was a real journalist because he knows how to use a dictionary. For Assad, do you think he's a war criminal? Here's the thing. Assad, Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi from Libya, these are brutal dictators and their people have seen harm, great harm come from them. My policy has always been that the United States needs to stop acting as the world's police, needs to stop waging these costly regime change wars because it does not serve the objectives and the interests of the American people, first of all. Second of all, it doesn't actually help the people that supposedly we are trying to help time and again. People in these countries see more death, more destruction, more suffering, more refugees coming about as a result of our going in and waging a regime change war. And it comes at a great cost to the American people. My brothers and sisters in uniform have sacrificed tremendously, losing their lives, coming home with lost limbs, coming home with invisible wounds. It has undermined our national security, strengthening terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. So as president, I will end these wasteful wars and I will meet with leaders of other countries, whether they be dictators or adversaries or potential adversaries. And I'm inspired by the examples of leaders who've come before us, leaders like JFK who met with Khrushchev. Uh, Roosevelt, who met with Stalin, a murderous dictator. 
There are so many different examples of leaders putting the interests of their people ahead of their political interests and exercising the kind of courage that we need to see in our leadership. Well, and NPR doesn't talk about the fact that Rumsfeld and Bush were friends with Hussein. Let's freak out when a gay celebrity hangs out with a Republican war criminal, but not when those war criminals have hung out with torturers and violators of human rights. I really doubt that Bush and Rumsfeld were there to discuss peace and well-being of the Iraqi people. I bet they were there to discuss how to enrich themselves. Why are we pretending like diplomacy and peace-seeking is a bad idea in a world where the strong arm of the American military and brutal dictators is causing so much strain on resources and the human psyche? I mean, this sounds like Robin Young is cool with bombing citizens of Syria or Turkey to teach these sociopathic dictators a lesson about kindness. Well, and, and you know, your meeting with Assad uh, prompted outrage. Your colleagues passed a congressional resolution listing what his government has done, you know, using chemical weapons against his people. Isn't there a way to say this person is a war criminal or a bully? I have said that. I have said that numerous times. I've said he's a brutal dictator. I mean, look, the reality is my interest is in the interest of the American people. I would meet with Assad again. I would meet with a brutal dictator if it meant the possibility of saving more American lives, preventing more of our troops going and putting their lives needlessly into harm's way to continue to wage these wars that politicians in Washington continue to, to call for. Well, uh, you've also visited with India's Prime Minister Modi, who's been behind violence against Muslims. You filed a resolution supporting Donald Trump's diplomacy in North Korea. And of course, NPR is attacking her for her diplomacy. One of their sponsors is a war profiteer and airplane nose diver, Boeing. Look, we should be looking for diplomacy. We shouldn't want more wars that cost billions of dollars and millions of lives. We shouldn't be okay with the Pentagon losing $21 trillion. This is the kind of money that can help a bunch of programs that, uh, to, to help the American people. I mean, that's just math. Math that most people could understand if they weren't sent over to add dollars to the bottom line of some oil company and war profiteer by bombing innocent civilians in a country you can't even spell. And then you want to complain about refugees from these countries. It's a crisis that was caused because there was no diplomacy. Because the lack of diplomacy creates displacement. So if you want a bloated military... And that's your first solution when you hear uh, uh, that there are problems in a different country? Then you should bear the consequences of the real victims of your war. And NPR is complicit in this, not just by being backed by a war profiteer, but by being the mouthpiece for it. NPR is basically the useful idiot for war. Some people say you look more like Donald Trump, because you're perceived as embracing these strong men. And uh, a former FBI special agent told the New York Times that you are the Kremlin's preferred Democrat because Russia wants to see the U.S. <laughs> less involved in other countries. I'm just here's, here's worried what, about here's the perception. Why I'm laughing, because you're repeating all of the accusations coming from uh, different political opponents who use smear tactics to try to undermine the message that I'm bringing that's challenging the military industrial complex in Washington making it out to seem as though meeting with leaders of other nations is somehow cozying up or embracing them or all of these other things when in fact leadership means choosing diplomacy ahead of doing what's politically popular. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Washington to make the Democratic Party happy, to make the establishment happy. I went there to fight for the well-being of the people of our country. Well, yeah, that is a, a mic drop moment right there. OK, that was a mic dropping because of what Tulsi Gabbard just said. Okay, Tulsi Gabbard stands for the people, and that's an answer that establishment elites can't stand hearing. They fear it. And the FBI is saying that Gabbard is the Kremlin's favorite. How do they know this? Are they having regular meetings with Putin, discussing the destabilization of American elites over vodka and crumpets? If that is, if that's real, then that's the real Russiagate right there. Why is the FBI cozying up to the Russians? Are they Russian toadies? Republican Senator Rand Paul uh, and conservative commentator Ann Coulter have both praised you uh, for some... Okay, 
Uh, I have conservative fans too. And besides, a broken clock is twice uh, right. R or wait, hold on. Let me rephrase that statement because I fucked that up. Because I'm, I, there's just so much seething anger coming out of me right now. Okay. Besides, a broken clock is right twice a day. Look, all that means is that she transcends party lines, and maybe she'll be able to talk about progressive ideas with people that don't see themselves aligning with that term. And the reason for that is because she talks about serving the people, all people, not just the ones that have the same letter next to their political affiliation. Some of your comments. Here, so here's, here's, here's the just... thing that I want to make clear. Yeah. While, while you're bringing up some folks on the right, in the town halls that we're having, what we're seeing across the country is that my message, one of ending these wasteful regime change wars, this is a message that's resonating with Democrats, Republicans, independents, libertarians, people who we may disagree with on other issues, but who are coming together recognizing that we, the American people, are paying for the cost of war, and now is the time to end it. Mm. Yeah, that, that was another mic that just dropped. That was another mic drop moment right there. Okay, When it comes to regime change war, not one American seems to want it. Well, average Americans, anyway. It does seem like Robin Young is fine with sending young and women of all races, creeds, and sexuality over to a country we shouldn't be in to make sure that we have their oil. Uh, Congresswoman Gabbard, I want to ask you about a perception of you, and this is a lot of this has been about perception. Yeah, it has been, and we can perceive that you're a journalist, but really aren't one. You're a propagandist. Anyway, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that this next question is going to be absolutely riveting. We read the New York Magazine profile, the extensive profile of your childhood, and we also learned of your parents being devotees of Chris Butler, widely referred to as a cult leader, his group, The Science of Identity, um, it seemed to be an offshoot of Harry Krishna. Or... You, know, you know what I would, I would love to do is for our conversation to be focused on me, not yeah. my parents. Do you think it's inappropriate to ask a presidential candidate about growing up in a home with shrines to a man who is considered a cult leader? I do. I, I think that's really? a very religious, bigoted question to ask because it just shows the lack of even interest or understanding about what Hinduism, Vaishnava Hinduism, is about. Right now, you're taking uh, misinformation, smears, and bigoted attacks from other media sources and trying to pose them as sincere questions, and I think that's offensive. Well, I, I'm sorry that you do, because I think a lot of people are interested in you know, someone who grew up in a home that followed a man who taught sexual conservatism, skepticism of science. Your father uh, became an activist against well, gay marriage. Once again, Robin, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, because you're saying things that um, are, are just are, are not based in in fact and 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 you're repeating uh, well, smears wait, wait, and, and, you and have, things that are coming You have from apologized other folks. for the work that you did on behalf of your father. Yeah, so against... ask me about my positions. Okay. Ask me about things that I've said and that I've done. Well, this was only going to be a short synopsis of some of that to ask you to debunk, if you'd like, the thinking on the part of some that you are still even running as part of Chris Butler's group. Uh, look, I, I don't know how to seriously answer a question the way that you've posed it. Okay. If we all got lost there for a moment, Robin Young from National Public Radio just asked a presidential candidate running in the United States of America if she was a cult leader. That's a real question that got asked on a radio interview by someone that calls himself a journalist. And just because they did it in a soft, mellow tone with a lot of $4 words, we're supposed to sit there in our sweaters eating our organic pea soup with a little bit of salt and pepper so we don't offend the peas and say this is real journalism. And Robin Young doesn't understand what Hinduism is or well to where Tulsi Gabbard stands on her spiritual path. Tulsi quotes the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita on her website where she talks about her spirituality. Her belief is having a personal relationship with God. That's what religion should be. It's personal. And not in an action movie way where the bad guy does something and the hero goes, And this time, it's personal. 
No, more like it's between you and your individual connection to what you consider a higher power. It doesn't need to be shared by everyone, and neither is it your duty to enforce that personal relationship onto other people. Her belief of putting that into to spiritual love into action is seen in her service to everyone. She fights for every person regardless of race, religion, creed, or sexual orientation. I can hardly say the same for Robin Young. Robin Young's personal connection to God seems to be coming from a check that the DNC and Boeing are cutting to her every single month. Because you're not even trying to understand my own spiritual practice as a Vaishnava Hindu. Well, no, tell me about it. Tell me about it. What does that, that mean? Sure, absolutely. Vaishnava Hinduism, the practice that I follow, is a monotheistic branch of Hinduism that is centered around love. Love for God and love for others. And how best we can be pleasing to God through the practice of karma yoga, which means taking action uh, to serve others, to protect our planet, and to develop my own personal loving relationship with God. Uh, Congressman Telsey Gabbard. we've got to get going. Yep. Thank you so much. And she was gone. Uh, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, the Democratic presidential candidate. Strange cut at the end of that interview. Almost like there was more to this interview that we will probably never hear. At this point, we have a more fair view and coverage of Tulsi Gabbard on Fox News. Fox News. I mean, come on. Trickery is in their name. Fox News. They're like a sly, clever creature that's going to trick you into its games. It lives in a den where thieves hang out. That's what the network has named itself after, and they've given better coverage to Tulsi's campaign. NPR has even gone after American comedian and my good friend Lee Camp on the television show Redacted Tonight. Because his show is on RT America, and NPR paints him as a, a, some kind of a Russian propagandist. Even though not a single person that was interviewed after one of the, the, the Reacted Tonight episode tapings said that they were worried this was Russian propaganda. But editors of satirical outlets like The Onion have called Lee shrill and were worried that he was a propagandist. Propagandist for what? The truth? If NPR is going after networks like RT for being sponsored by a state, then they should be all going after the BBC, Al Jazeera, and even themselves for being state-sponsored news networks. And at this point, more people are comfortable with trusting comedians as journalists because we don't have an agenda. Our agenda is to find the objective truth. We're not owned by anyone, and most of us are broke or on their way to it. Comedians are far more reliable as sources than what is considered to be establishment media at this point. NPR uses soft, perfectly measured tones to lull the Americans back to sleep so we can be comfortable with the war crimes that we commit again and again. Liberal or conservative, the corporate media is steeped with propaganda against anyone that speaks out against the industries that funnel cash into these people's pockets. They don't think you're smart enough to pick up on this. They think that their little subtle ways of manipulating you through these different tones and these different fear tactics is going to work. So let's keep our minds sharp and active. Let's be critical thinkers in our society so we make sure we know where these corporate propagandist lies are, and take their words with a massive grain of salt. Hey, everybody. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, please give it a like and uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you can be notified about more videos on a uh, subject matter like this. And uh, I've got live stand-up comedy shows coming up across the country on October 15th. I will be at the Pie Shop in Washington, D.C. October 17th, I will be at the Lou Room inside Zissimo's in Baltimore, Maryland. October 18th, I will be at the Epicure Cafe in Fairfax, Virginia. On October 25th and 26th, 
I will be at the Church of Satire Comedy Club in Hanover, Pennsylvania, November 1st. I will be at Blank Slate in Elyria, Ohio. That is in the Cleveland area. And on November 2nd, I will be at Urban Artifact in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I hope some of you guys uh, that enjoyed this video can make it out to these live shows. If you want to see whether I'm coming close to your city or to your city, you can go to my website at ramannoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I hope to see you guys at a live show, and thank you very much. We'll see you on the road.